In this video, we discuss which methods you could use to prove that the language ETM, which is the set of strings description of M, where M is a Turing machine and the language of M is empty, um, to prove methods to prove that this language is undecidable. So let's look at some options. Okay, so could we design a Turing machine that recognizes ETM? So, no. Can't do that for a couple of reasons. Um, reason number one is that ETM is not actually recognizable. Okay, it's co-Turing recognizable. So, not ETM is Turing recognizable, but ETM is not Turing recognizable. So, first of all, you couldn't design a Turing machine that recognizes ETM anyway. More than that, some Turing recognizable languages are decidable and some are undecidable. Okay, so for example, um, ATM is undecidable and it's Turing recognizable. Undecidable. Okay, uh, ADFA is Turing recognizable and decidable. Okay, so Showing that a language is Turing recognizable does not imply anything about its decidability. So we can't conclude, if we have a recognizer for ETM, we can't conclude that it's undecidable or that it is decidable. We could only conclude that it's Turing recognizable. Okay, so reducing ATM to ETM. This one works. Okay, so remember that if a language, let's call it A, reduces to a language B, and A is undecidable, my pen really hates that word, undecidable, then B is undecidable. Okay, why is this? A reducing to B means we can take an instance of the problem A and make it an instance of the problem B. And then if we can solve B, then we get the solution for B gives us a solution to A. Okay, that's what reducibility gives us. So if A is undecidable and it reduces to B, then if we have a solution for B, we have a solution for A. So if B is decidable, then A must be decidable. So if we know that A reduces to B and A is undecidable, then it can't be the case that B is decidable. B must be undecidable. Okay, so we have that ATM is undecidable. So if ATM reduces to ETM, then ETM is undecidable. Okay, so if you show that ATM reduces to ETM, then we would conclude that ETM is undecidable. Okay, how about the method using the pumping lemma for context-free languages? This does not work. Okay, what does the pumping lemma for context-free languages give us? It gives us that context-free implies pumpable by pumping for context-free languages. It also gives us that not pumpable implies not context-free. Okay, however, what can we say about something that's not context-free? Only that it's not context-free. Okay, so remember our picture kind of looks like this, and this is inside, I'm gonna call it D for decidable. And then everything that's decidable is also Turing recognizable. Okay. So just because something is not context-free does not make it undecidable. It could be the case that, can I get a dot there? It could be the case that it's there. It's decidable, but not context-free. Okay, it could also be the case that it's Turing recognizable, but not decidable. Okay, so we can't conclude from the fact that something is not context-free that it's, that it's undecidable. Okay. All right, last one. Uh, designing a Turing machine that recognizes ETM complements. So here I mean ETM bar or ETM complement. Okay, so this is a similar uh, case as the first 
option. Okay, so even though ETM bar is Turing recognizable, we can't conclude anything about a language just by knowing that it's Turing recognizable. We can't conclude that it's undecidable or decidable. Okay, so this doesn't work either.